Today we talk tuning a Taisho Koto. The first thing we need to do is agree upon the number of strings we're tuning. We've got 9 strings, 2 strings, 15 strings, and the standard 5 strings. Let's start with the standard 5 and then talk about it from there. Generally this consists of 3 soprano strings, a tenor string, and a bass string. The top 3 are always soprano, but the next one can be changed out. Some people use it as another soprano, some people an alto, a tenor. Generally speaking, you want it one octave lower than the soprano strings, though. Then past that, the bass note is generally another octave lower, though we'll get around to what note that is exactly. If we take a look at the keyboard and buttons, you'll notice that they actually come down over the top four strings. They don't hit that bottom bass string. This means when we're hitting notes, we're actually changing those top four strings, and that bottom bass string is just a drone string. The next important thing is how these buttons interact with the strings. This is a lot like a piano. The bottom white buttons are much like the white keys on a piano, and the black much like the black keys on a piano. The white keys are there for the natural notes, and the black keys are the sharps. We base off of the one key as the root, and if we assume that we're in C standard tuning, that one would therefore be the C. Based off of this, you'll notice that the leftmost white button is the 6, followed by a 7, and back up to 1. Again, assuming we were in C standard tuning, where 1 is the C, we would have 6, A, 7, B, 1, C. Going one note back from this, aka open string, it means that the open string will be tuned to G. This in turn means that if we want to tune to C standard tuning, we're going to tune those top four strings to G. The bottom bass string is then dependent on what we want to play. Oftentimes, if we're in C standard, we'll just go ahead and tune that to C as well, so that we can hit it when we're hitting the one button. This can of course be changed around, you can tune that to G, D, whatever fits your liking of what you're playing. And then of course, if we want to get super fancy, you could go ahead and tune those individual strings to make chords and play the notes that fit within those chords, but we don't need to go there and that would be very specific to a song. So now we get into devices with more strings. Generally speaking, these just offer more options while playing. You're not likely to find music written for these devices with more strings, so you'll probably have to write it yourself. In a lot of ways, it's like a 7-8-9 string guitar. In the right hands, it can sound amazing, but you have to really work at it to make those strings work for you. To get an idea of this, we can take a look at the 9-string options. These are the most common of the multi-string variants. Since Nardan was selling a line of 9-strings, they had a common tuning chart that you could refer to. This shows that the 9-string was split into 2-3-2-2, two, 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 aka a grouping of 2 strings, then 3 strings, 2-2. Two, two. Now you wouldn't want to tune individual strings in these groupings to different notes because it's hard to hit the individual strings, but if you had each grouping tuned to a different note, you have access to four different notes for each button press. You can see based on this chart that the tuning they recommend is G, G, D or C, and G, aka top two strings to G, next three to G, then to D, then the G. I've attached a little sample clip here from the Nardan company on demonstrating playing this nine string so you can get an idea how it would sound with this tuning. A link to that full video is in the description, of course. You'll also note that the tuning guide calls out these onomatopoeic sounds, shan, tsun, and ton. The second line is melody, which is just saying these are the melody strings. These are supposed to be the sounds that you create when you're hitting the string with a certain technique, aka they've named the strings after the techniques that you would use on that set of strings. Now this does not and will not always hold true, of course, to hit certain strings with a certain technique every time, but it is a good way to name the string so that you're not calling everything melody string or drone string. That gets pretty confusing when you've got 9 strings, 15 strings, etc. This is actually a carryover from older music. You'll find the same onomatopoeic notation in Kodo music. For each note hit, you're denoting the way it's supposed to be hit with these onomatopoeic sounds, which then correlates to the technique used. I got a lot of good info from a blog post. They had a different tuning completely. I'll post that here as well as the blog in the description. 
you can see this person uses FGGC for the different groupings, and I'll go ahead and play a video to show what that sounds like, as well as a link to the video in the description. So you can see based off that he split those string groupings up to hit major and major seventh chords. You can of course play around and have tons of fun creating different chords for different songs. Really the world's your oyster and that's about it. Start with the standard tuning and work your way up. If you enjoyed then like and subscribe. For support or samples, Patreon's out. If you hate my content, I will not lie. To the corner I go, where I will cry.